It is a legend no one will forget. Everyone thought King Koopa had left the Mushroom Kingdom. And then, his doom ship attacked. King Koopa was back with the greatest danger ever known, his Koopa Kids. Using their new superpowers, the Super Mario Brothers rescued Princess Toadstool and beat back the evil Koopa family. I'll get those flutters! This is where we host World of Warcraft. All of the data for your characters, the world that you interact in, is all contained in the data centers. Every single server converged and proceeded to basically repeatedly crash the entire world server. Like all drugs, wow, it's dangerous, and you can get hooked. This isn't our first rodeo with World of Warcraft expansion packs and them horribly breaking their existing lore, or should I say, rewriting it. Speaking of retcons, know that Tomb of Sargeras is gonna be like our final raid in the whole thing? Or so we think. Well, guess what happened to it in Warcraft 3? The power of Sargeras. You would claim it as your own. That power is beyond my reach, little warden. But this... The Eye of Sargeras contains all the power I'll need to rid this wretched world of my enemies once and for all. It is only fitting that I bury you in turn. I will not forget you, my sisters. You will be avenged. I swear it. Now I've got to find a way out. So the answer is obviously, don't think about it too much. I mean, come on, let's think back to Burning Crusade and how they were telling us on the forums that the framework for the portal wasn't destroyed. The Orcish hordes lay vanquished as the triumphant armies of the Alliance stood vigil over the evil gateway that had brought the Orcs into Azeroth. Calling upon the arcane powers of the Archwizard Khadgar, the fury of the earth and skies were unleashed upon the Dark Portal to destroy it once and for all. Of course, then people go and went, wait, but the, the portal itself was still intact. Well, think a little bit further to the end of the expansion pack that followed that. As the flames die to embers and the arcane energies that once bound two worlds slowly fade, the dark portal crumbles into dust. The dark portal crumbles into dust. Crumbles into dust. As its powers subside and dissolve. And people ask me, why don't I cover Warcraft lore? Why, when I love the game, do I not care about the lore in the same way I do Elder Scrolls lore? And the main reason is, is because of this. Because every single time we think we know what happened in the past, Onyxia didn't get killed by us in the raid. No, it got killed by Barian, the king who returned, the king who was on Algaz Island for no apparent reason, became Logosh. These are good stories, but... They don't know how to write new stories and integrate them into their world. Instead, they just alter the game as it was. They change the past. They retcon stuff. And in an Elder Scrolls world where thought defines reality, that might work. But in Warcraft, it's just... They give zero fucks about their own lore, so why should I care about their lore? I love the game to death. I've loved Warcraft 1, 2, 3, and even World of Warcraft. I had my problems with World of Warcraft from the get-go, but it's been an enjoyable experience and well worth my money every single time. I don't play it religiously like other people do. You know, I'll play it for one or two months, quit, and then when more content is added, I'll jump back on. I don't live the game. I've got other things to do. I can't think about their story seriously because if you rewind back to the beginning of this video, that's the kind of esteem I hold for Warcraft lore.
because a writer who gives a damn about his storyline is going to write a Bible or some kind of definitive, this is the way it is and all games henceforth will use this material. But that's not how it works. Similarly to Bethesda, they bend the lore to suit whatever gameplay elements they want to introduce. This is a cool idea, let's implement it. We'll just change the past so instead... Medivh's mother was this instead of that. And then we're going to insert a Naru and we're going to say, Hey, you know the Illidan, that guy who completely lost his mind? We're going to spin it a different way now. We're going to make it like a Naru contacted him and said, You are the light and the truth. Fuck that! I don't mind if you write your characters with depth if you do it from the beginning. But don't change them after the fact and to make it appear as if they have depth. And don't write a huge subplot into your book a hundred pages in and then drop it as a one-liner during a freaking pre-Legion event. Oh, there's a titan inside Azeroth. Fuck you. They have written so much potential in the past and one by one I see these story threads squandered, cut off, broken to serve some kind of game mechanic they want to throw in. They sell all of this stuff really really short when they had potential in the things they were writing and I can I would be infuriated as a writer to see that happen time and time again but I don't even know if they're actually thinking their storylines as deeply as I am. It's very possible that they're simply writing what has to be done for this specific mechanic. Good, it's done. And then no more thought is being placed to it. I mean, as a writer, I look at the parallels between the hero's journey and what certain characters do, pair the history of the character versus what they end up doing later. And I'm going to tell you right now, Garrosh was not a garbage character. People think Garrosh was a garbage character, but he was an excellent example of Thrall's failure. Of the fact that Thrall was a shit leader, and he's now just coming to grips with that. And in his rejection of that leadership role, he actually set up the failure of the Horde. In short, Thrall's failure hasn't ended yet, even after Garrosh's death. Because Vol'jin whom they declared to be the next war chief, dies. That is a great story thread, but then you followed up with Sylvanas. And what happened to all the stuff in Silverpine where she was resurrecting people and, you know, the potential that maybe she was secretly working with Putris all along, you know, and she betrayed him. Uh, things like that. There's all kinds of ways in which you could have made Sylvanas an arc villain. Or you could have made her with a completely different agenda. There's so much storytelling potential that's being weighed down by game mechanics. So to conclude this video, the big question I'm going to answer, why don't I do videos on Warcraft lore? Why don't I respect Warcraft lore? Well, number one, it's simplistic, almost childish. And when they insert bits of complexity into it, bits of complexity that I love, they kill it off for the mechanics. Because this isn't a storytelling medium. This is a game where you collect gear. It's a gear treadmill. And you know what? I'm fine with that. I love the questing experiences. The, the micro stories that Blizzard tells are extremely fun for me. I enjoy the leveling experience from 1 to 100. Having tried the beta, I know I will enjoy the leveling experience from 1 to 110. But ultimately... I don't respect the franchise enough to waste huge amounts of time making lore videos about it because the lore is just going to change again. Someone's going to write a book and then we're going to talk about that book and then pieces of that book are going to get retconned and forgotten about. I, I just don't like it. Warcraft lore. I just don't like it. But enough of that. Do I like World of Warcraft? You betcha. One of my favorite MMORPGs ever made. People say, you play ESO? And to that question I answer, I've tried. I've really tried to play ESO, but guess what? When I look at it as an Elder Scrolls game, I'd rather play any other game in the series. 
when I look at it as an MMO, I'd rather play World of Warcraft. And so that sucks the motivation out of my gameplay, and I can't find myself playing ESO more than about, I would say, 15 minutes to an hour before I just lose all motivation to play and it's not fun for me anymore. Because ultimately, I'm comparing it to other games. And I'd rather play a Game Boy game like Donkey Kong, one of the Mega Man X games for the Super Nintendo, than I would play ESO. That's just after having tried it enough. I had the draw to play it when the mystery was there, but at, now that the mystery's gone, I just don't enjoy it at all. And that pretty much sums it up. So, I really like World of Warcraft. I'm going to be playing World of Warcraft this week during Legion's launch. This is going to be my Warcraft week with lots and lots of live streaming. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you have any inspiration to join me in World of Warcraft, I will be playing on the Wormrest Accord server for the United States, at least for a month or two before I give the game up. Check the social media links for more content, and I will see y'all next time.